I'm Avery Brock, and after the better part of a year, I finally have another project video. That's right, I have an intro now on my videos. I figured, you know, I kind of needed to make up for the fact that it's been a year since I made my last one, and I'm also trying to class them up a little bit here. Now, regarding that last video, I did win that SparkFun competition, so I'd like to thank everyone who watched that video and for SparkFun for hosting the competition, and I hope to make a video here soon about what I did with what they sent me. Now, in addition to the intro, you may notice that the background behind me is a little different and that the quality of this video is a little better than the last one. And also that it was a year since I made the last one. Now, I have an excellent excuse for both of those, and that is... I went to college! That's right, I'm in the land of potatoes at the least out-of-state school I could possibly be at. Now, the reason I'm here is a story for another time, but I'll probably share it and also my experiences and some tips to give if you're a maker heading off to college. Now, today though, I want to talk about this thing I built up on my wall. Now, since a close-up of this doesn't allow me to be in the frame, the rest of this video is going to be brought to you by the magic of still images and Microsoft PowerPoint. So, as you may see by the name of the video, this is a weather station I built, so I can tell how warm or cold it is outside and also the relative humidity and all that jazz. Now since this also logs the time and engineering is all about coming up with fancy names for everyday things, we're going to call this the thermochromograph. So it's combining temperature and time logging capabilities which is what this thing does. So running this whole thing is Arduino Do, which is Arduino's ARM Cortex 84 megahertz processor which runs at 3 volts, which I chose because it operates at 3 volts, so I don't have to do any logic level shifting to communicate with the sensors or the TFT display. And the TFT display is a common ILI 9341 2.8 inch TFT, so it's easy to communicate between the microcontroller and the TFT via SPI. So in addition to knowing the temperature, I also wanted this to know what time it was so it could tell me when highs and lows occurred and also act like a clock. So I picked out a DS3234 RTC module, which communicates via SPI. And one of the nice things about the Do is it has extended SPI capabilities, so it's really easy to talk to multiple SPI devices, which we're doing here between the TFT and the RTC. Uh, for the pressure, there's a BMP180 barometric pressure sensor, which communicates via I squared C, and that's just right under the TFT. And then for the indoor and outdoor temperatures, they're not on the screen, but they're on the window and inside my room, are two AM2302 temperature and humidity sensors, which just communicate via the one wire protocol. So when this thing first turns on, it goes through some debug lines to let you know everything's working and it gives you any errors if the SD card can't be read or anything. And then it goes into the home page, which we'll talk about here on this slide. Okay, so brief description of the home page. Uh, at the top left, we have the print date function, underneath which is the print time function. Both behave like standard digital clocks. Uh, they auto scale to the font size you put into the program. And the clock has a blue AM or an orange PM, depending on the time of day. And they both also only update the pixels that need to be changed, along with all the other functions on here. So you don't get any screen flicker or anything like that, so you don't have to update the whole screen. Uh, beneath the time is the print temperature function, which is run twice, once for the inside sensor and once for the outside sensor. And the readout changes color based on the temperature it's reading from the sensor. Uh, underneath both of the temperature readouts is the data point readout, which lets you know how many data points are on the SD card for that day's file, uh, which lets you know everything's working and your SD card is able to be read and written to. So the next page I call the data page, just because it's giving you the float readouts from the temperature sensors rather than the rounded integers, which you can change by just typing decimal instead of rounded into the function in the code. And above both of those is a smaller print time function, which is smaller just by changing the size it prints at. It just scales everything down for you. 
And then below those is the print pressure function, which just prints out the current pressure read from the sensor. And you can also have it print in decimal or rounded numbers. So the next page is the humidity page. It's doing pretty much what the last page did, except with humidity, it's giving you the full decimal values instead of the rounded integer. And again, we have the small time up in the corner. Okay, so the graph page. Right before it graphs, it prints out a debug page that displays the high and lows on that day's file. Now to explain the file system this uses, every 24 hours it creates a new log file and a new count file. So the count file stores how many data points are on the log file, and the log file is named that day's date. So it's really easy for it to open the current day's file just by reading the real-time clock and converting it into a string. So after it gets the highs and lows and prints them out, it graphs the data points, and in doing so it auto-scales the number of data points it shows, the distance between each one of the data points, and then it scales the entire graph for the absolute high and the absolute low. And then when it actually goes to print the graph, it also prints the highs in red and the lows in blues at the same y-axis level as the highs and lows are on the graph. And the graph line is blue where there's a low and red where there's a high, so you can actually see them. At this point, you can only really estimate what time of day they happened at, though I hope to make it so it actually prints out the time they were read at. So that's pretty much it. We'll see it turn on here and run through the debug screen before it hits the home page. It's really easy to change the rate the pages change at. It's just a constant defined at the beginning of the program. And also how many data points it takes, as it's just a function you can call as often as you like. Right now I'm calling it once every two minutes. So while it does take a lot of data points, it gives you a nicer graph earlier in the morning. And once it gets to the graph page, we'll see it run the debug lines first, where it shows you what the highs and lows are before it prints them out so you can make sure everything's working with your SD card and the data. Well, that's that. Thanks for watching. And stay tuned, and hopefully I'll have another one of these, hopefully within a month, as long as I don't get too bogged down here. Thank you. I'll see you guys around. That's a good shot. Is this still recording? Yep. Okay. Or just wait for the track to stop. Okay, I'll just slightly improve it if I can.